Welcome back to Peer Guided DBT Lessons, provided by DBT Skills Application, Peers Helping Peers. This week's lesson, Mark 2-13 in our Distress Tolerance module, will be examining self-soothing. Please keep in mind we're simply peers helping peers, working together in order to bring about a more peaceful, constructive, and ultimately happier life. Self-soothing is particularly important for the emotionally sensitive, yet many don't think about, forget, or discount the need for and the effectiveness of self-soothing activities. In upset moments, it's hard to think about calming yourself. Plus, self-soothing does not come naturally to everyone and requires thought and action. A stress response is a natural part of our survival pattern. As explained by Katherine Hall, Ph.D., the director owner of the Dialectical Behavior Therapy Center in Houston, Texas, the amygdala is believed to be the part of your brain that processes basic feelings. The amygdala plays a big role in sounding an alert for threatening situations and triggers fight or flight behaviors. This works well as long as there truly is a threat that you need to run away from or defend yourself against. Otherwise, your body suffers from being on high alert when it doesn't need that reaction. Feeling like you are being threatened when you aren't is unpleasant and exhausting. Those who have suffered traumatic experiences may find they are easily stressed and often are in the flight or fight state when there is no current danger. This may be because in addition to being part of the threat alert system, the amygdala also seems to be involved in emotional memories. The more intense the situation, the stronger the memory, according to Michael Jarr in his book, The Spiritual Anatomy of Emotion. Early trauma in infancy, childhood, or even before birth is believed to influence the programming of the body's stress activation system, the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal, or HPA system, making the set point lower than it is for those who do not experience such trauma. The result is that people who have experienced early trauma are more hypervigilant and more likely to experience stressful reactions. They are prone to debilitating conditions such as migraines, allergies, and chronic pain. Being more reactive to the world in general seems to result from early trauma. Active, purposeful self-soothing would tend to be more difficult for these individuals and also more necessary. Creating sensations that say there is no emergency helps calm the body's alert system so the brain, or the prefrontal cortex, can regain its ability to think and plan. If you are sipping hot tea under a soft blanket or lazing in a bubble bath, then there must be no reason to run at full speed to the nearest cave. Whatever the reason or origin of emotional sensitivity, self-soothing can help. Self-soothing is part of finding a middle ground, a gray area, between being detached or numb and experiencing an emotional crisis or upheaval. Allowing yourself to experience the uncomfortable emotions without feeding them and making them more intense enables the emotions to pass. Soothing yourself helps you tolerate the experience without acting in ways that are not helpful in the long run or blocking the emotions, which makes the emotions grow larger or come out in ways you didn't intend. Know your self-soothing activities. Usually soothing activities are related to the senses. Different people are comforted in different ways and may prefer one sense over another. Sometimes what is soothing for one situation is not the same as what is soothing in a different situation. When your alert system is firing danger, then physical activity may help, like playing a fast-moving game of racquetball or going for a walk. When the upset is more about feeling hurt or sad, activities such as sipping hot tea or petting a dog may be more effective. The smell of apple pie baking, 
a beautiful sunset, the softness of a dog's fur, the song of birds singing, the taste of chocolate or the sensation of rocking. Reading a good book can be soothing for some. Being with a good friend, someone you feel safe with and loved by can be soothing. Experiment with the different senses to see what works best for you. Some may be best soothed by focusing on a specific sense. Some people are more visual than others and some are more auditory. Finding out what works best for you through practicing self-soothing in different situations will help you manage your emotions more effectively. You may want a way of reminding yourself to self-soothe and what to do as people do not think clearly when upset. Motivation to self-calm in tense moments can be low. During times of stress, relief may literally be at the tip of your nose. Intentionally engaging our five senses, hearing, touch, smell, taste, and sight, are incredibly powerful tools in providing instant relief in a hectic world. Plus, they're free. Are you a visual person? Do you love music? Do what works best for you and develop an individualized stress relief plan. Smell. Whether it's the delicious smell of fresh baked banana bread or roasted vegetables, the natural aromas of lavender soap, flowers in the park, or pine trees in a forest, aromatherapy is a powerful way to relax. You can create the type of atmosphere that you want with natural aromas from flowers or essential oils. 99% of taste is in fact smell. So take a moment to inhale a piping hot mug of your favorite tea and slowly and deeply breathe in the flavor of your food, appreciating where it came from and how it was made. Hearing. Sounds have the ability to calm our racing minds and bodies. Listen to a cat purring. Play or listen to your favorite relaxing music. A personal favorite of mine is playing the piano, instrumental, guitar, and classical music. Or go on an adventure to find a live babbling brook, ocean waves, or the sound of rain dancing on the ground. You can also find these sounds for free online or in a sound machine. These soothing sounds actually change our brain waves and help us relax. Try closing your eyes to enhance the sounds you're hearing. Touch. The sensation of touch is often overlooked, but a powerful way to unwind. Notice the pressure of your back on the bed or a chair, or your feet touching the floor. Rub a piece of your clothing and notice the textures. Is it smooth or rough? Warm or cool? Touch something else and pay attention to the differences or similarities. Try creating art with modeling clay or finger paint. Feel more grounded by running your hands through sand or digging in the dirt. Touch the bark of a tree, pet a dog or a cat, or give someone a hug. Hugging releases oxytocin, a chemical that makes us feel good and builds stronger connections among people. Hugging and touch in general lowers blood pressure, decreases the stress hormone cortisol. From a handshake, hug, pat on the back, or a massage, touch is a powerful way to promote your overall health. Taste. To calm a busy mind, Try eating and drinking mindfully. If you're drinking ginger tea, for example, swish it around in your mouth and notice the distinct flavors. Are they sweet, sour, bitter, salty, and savory? Eat and drink at a slower pace, appreciating and savoring every bite and every sip. Notice the distinct flavors and textures of your food, how they pair together and how different foods make you feel. Sight. Certain shades of blue and green are calming and soothing, 
as they remind us of nature. Watching the clouds float by, birds take flight, and the sunrise and set all arouse a sense of wonder and that we're part of something larger than ourselves. Electronic devices like smartphones, tablets, and TVs admit blue light that signals our brains to stay awake. Instead, especially at night, try looking at natural sights like the starry night, plants, or watching your kids or pets sleep. Create self-soothing experiences. A self-soothing experience involves more than one sense and has an overall feel of valuing the self. Having your favorite meal at a table set with cloth napkins and pretty dishes while listening to music you love would be a self-soothing experience for some. A bubble bath with your favorite scent, a favorite drink, and listening to a book on tape could also be a self-soothing experience. As you experiment with the different senses to see what works best for you, you may want to create a self-soothing box full of options that you know are effective for you. When you're upset, hunting for a special song or even remembering what is soothing is difficult. Put a list of your self-soothing activities in the box along with some of the objects you might need. But note, this is not the same as a crisis survival toolbox. While all these things would go in the crisis toolbox too, there are many other skill tools that will be in the toolbox. We will be building our crisis boxes in a later session. Next week in our peer guided DBT lessons, we will be looking outside the box, a sharing of additional calming tools which complement DBT, earthing and cloud hands.